be very, very quiet. I'm hunting wabbits. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Dennis Gebhardt here. Welcome to another episode of Rabbit Trails along with me and my partner in crime, Max Masano. Max, how you doing, brother? Dude, I am great. Good. How me too. You? Good me deal. Too. Uh, you know, living the dream in the summertime here. This is my favorite time of year. You know, did you guys actually have a cool day today? Because we did here in fun and fashionable Greenville, Illinois. Yeah, Previously, today, it was like 97 for like yeah. the last four days. But today, today was like, about 80 degrees for us. So it was really, really nice. It wasn't nice. bad at all. But uh, yeah, sometimes it gets excruciatingly hot. Yeah, I'm with you. I hate it. When I Same. am involuntary perspiration, I hate that. <laughs> exactly. That's one of my pet peeves. One of my pet peeves. So here we are, episode 22. Man. Can you believe that? That is crazy. Yeah. I'll tell you, it's almost like a full season back in the day when, mm -hmm. when, when shows stayed on the air for 27 weeks. Well, that I'm hoping was a full season. I'm hoping Bravo will give us a contract because this is the best reality TV show out there. Yes. Well, let's keep our fingers crossed, man. Yeah. Make sure. <laughs> anyway, look, so today we're going to talk about art principles versus hair color theory. That mm. sounds really profound, doesn't it? Absolutely. <laughs> there's there's a little backstory to this, Dennis, and I think you should kind of well, uh, set the well, stage. You know, it's in our industry, in the hairdressing industry, you know, sometimes just delivering the information verbally, sometimes people don't absorb the information. They don't understand the information because hairdressers, uh, by their nature are pretty much visual and kinesthetic people. I mean, they have some auditory preferences, but basically they're visual and kinesthetic. Let me see it. Let me touch it. Let me feel it. And so sometimes to tell the story of what's happening inside the hair strand, <laughs> we choose visuals that don't even belong in our industry. You know, like one of the visuals we use for hair color theory teaching is something called the color wheel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the most common one used is the Grunbacher color wheel, which sure. just happens to also be the color wheel they use in art. <laughs> okay, so the wheel I was taught on, because there's more than one wheel, <laughs> I was taught on the color sphere, which is really a Munsell theory that comes from sure. Munsell. And, uh, but I was also taught that in hair color, we're not really painting a house or painting a post or painting a wall, even though we use art principles to kind of help us understand what happens when you mix colors together, we're actually doing chemistry. And so what I find happens is that some of the information is so basic that it really doesn't get across the point of what we're doing when we actually do color hair. For example, most of the time when they teach hair color theory, they use a color wheel, they might use Play-Doh, they might use watercolors, which have nothing to do with hair color. But they don't preface that with the learner. And so the learner thinks, oh yeah, you know, if I have orange, I'll just add blue to it and I'll make something in between. Um, and so there's why I find sometimes that's why people are confused. Even if they've been doing hair for such a long time, they're still confused because they're going back to that initial education that they got, which really had nothing to do with what happens when we color hair. Sure. And I mean, you see it carried to extremes. Sometimes frustrates me because I love this business and I believe that this is a, a highly skilled profession and I believe that it deserves respect. But when I see people trying to teach to hairdressers, I believe that they dumb down the information to a point to where you learn that stuff when you were in grade three. And 
I, I just have an issue with that. I mean, they they do all kinds of things. They use cupcakes for the color wheel to make it fun, and or they make a color wheel made of play doh. It's just all this very basic, childish information that they're sharing, and it frustrates me because I consider myself a professional. I consider everyone who colors hair and understands how hair color works to be a professional. And then I see them teaching people with acrylic paints and things of that sort. Now, I agree that sometimes it takes that to get the point across, but you have to understand that's paint. We may, we work with hair color. Here's an example. If you're teaching using acrylic paint, you can mix two colors together and you can create a, a second color. But in hair color, when you mix two colors together, there's a lot of things involved in that mixture. Mm -hmm. You know, every, in every hair color, you have background, you have tone, and you have reflect. Those are all three present in every color you use. So if I add one ounce of this color to one ounce of another color, I'm adding background once, background twice, tone once, tone twice. And so we really work in a world of, you know, browns and grays with some additional tonalities, but that's really the world of hair color. I suppose if you, if you actually showed a color wheel w using what we actually visually see in hair color, it would be pretty frightening. <laughs> Right. Well, yeah. I, people learn yeah. this when they die out, right? Because we teach dying Absolutely. out. Absolutely. And when they look at it, they go, "It looks like mud." Yeah, right. it certainly does. I mean, and and just to take what you said a step further, we are, you know, yes, you can say we are dealing in primary colors, secondary colors, and tertiary colors. But as hair colorists, what we're really dealing with or dealing in is chemicals right so it is the combination of all of these different chemicals and there's not that many of them that create the end color result but it, the end color result is a combination of the chemicals in the tube in the developer and the hair yes and it, it, it's all fused together. It's not right. just these separate things. The end result is all, it, it's like an amalgamation yes. of all of that. Right. And I think that's kind of the, the part where it's not really communicated. You know, one of my early industry mentors said, hairdressing is chemistry, geometry and art yeah. and that has always really stuck with me with chemistry being the first point it's mm -hmm. like you have to understand these chemicals and their interaction with the fiber hair right that gives you your final color yes yes yeah so i i think that sometimes they go they, the information doesn't transfer. No. And if it doesn't transfer, then the whole experience for the learner has not been a benefit. And, and to me, that's the most important thing. If you are a trainer and you are teaching, you have to make sure that the information is relevant to what we are actually doing in hair color. I, I understand the challenge that we're trying to explain what's happening inside the hair to someone who will never see what's happening inside the hair. That's why I have always said hair color is the science of precise estimation. <laughs> because you, you, can't, you can't be honey, I shrunk the kids. You can't <laughs> shrink yourself down you know, and get into that little vehicle and go inside the hair strand. It's all an estimation. It's a, it's an opinion. It's a perception. 
it's a conclusion of what all of these things added together, here's what we assume, it's in a lot of its assumption, here's what we assume is happening in the hair. There are certain right. things that we know, you know, there's like we know that the hair is made up of positive and negative electrostatic charges. Uh, we know that the cuticle layer is not a layer, it's cuticle layers. We know that within those cuticle layers, there's sub layers. We know that cor the cortex is where most of the melanin in our hair lives. We know that when we break down the structure of the hair, we break down the melanin. And melanin is not separate from protein. It is part of the protein structure. And as we break it down, we increase light reflection and we decrease light absorption. Sure. And we know that when we add a color to the hair, the color actually chemically binds with the hair structure. So we now have actually created a different chemical structure, if you will. Yeah. So those are all things that we know. Those are givens. We know that in science. We know that's the way that it works. But now how to transfer that and help people understand that, that is the real challenge. And that's why today in 2021, hairdressers that have been coloring hair for 20 years, there's still a certain percentage of them that have no idea what's going on chemically. Yeah, because they just know that they just know this works. Use this because it works. Well, why right. does it work? I uh, don't ask me why, just use it. Yeah, there's, there's just so many moving parts and pieces to the chemical process, right? Right. So, and, and what we're trying to do is, our mission is to enlighten everybody and empower them so that they know what's going on at any given time within the process. Right. Well, you, you know, know, it goes back to when we were teaching color back in the day, Max, and we were trying to tell them what was in a bottle of hair color. And we talked about mm -hmm. that it had dye intermediates, that it had surfactants, and they went, surfactants, what's a surfactant? We said, well, those are lathering agents that helped the product to move, you know, help you apply it nicely to the hair, and it helps the product to remove. And they said, well, I still don't understand what a surfactant is. He said, well, it's kind of like the lathering agents that we use in shampoo. And so they said, oh, then you mean there's shampoo and hair color? No, there's not shampoo and hair color. We're just using that as a metaphor to help you understand what it does. But that's what happens in our industry. People want that blanket statement. They want, oh, it's shampoo. <laughs> so now we don't have right. to shampoo. <laughs> All Therefore, you don't have to shampoo it out. <laughs> right, right. So that's why the things we use, we choose to use as an example. Um, sometimes we have to make sure that we go a step beyond. You can't just use a visual and say, this is what it is when it's really not what it is. And you can't substitute your own version of a visual for an actual tool that we have to use. I refer to the pH scale. Oof. If you know how to under, if you know how to read the pH scale and you understand what pH is all about and you understand how the scale works, you don't have to you don't have to put up a speedometer and make that your pH scale. You already right. have a pH scale. Learn how to read it. Learn how to deliver that information. You know, I, I mean, I am shocked that how many people don't understand pH. Yeah. Okay. And um, if you're doing color, you better understand pH. Can I, can I share a quick story about that? Yes. So, you know, like I, I sort of understood pH, but it really was kind of like, I was on the back burner for me until I took, you know, one of your classes. 
Yeah. And then I basically bought myself a, a pH meter. Like I, I, I started with the strips and then I upgraded to the drops. And then I was like, yes, that the Hannah yeah. available on Amazon. Shameless yeah, yeah. Plug. And we We're don't not work for Amazon. Any money. <laughs> We're not making any money from it. So anyway, you guys fast forward to now I have a, a really great friend who works for a major manufacturer and she sent me some products. She's like, I, I really like you to try these. And they were all basically like uh, post color type products, mm -hmm. a shampoo, uh, a post color acidifying treatment and a conditioner. And when I measured the pH of everything, it was really shocking to me what the pH actually was mm -hmm. because it wasn't what I was expecting because you would think that like a post-color treatment would be super acidic and it wasn't. Actually, the conditioner was super acidic the post-color treatment wasn't that acidic and the shampoo wasn't that acidic. So I was like, this just doesn't really register, right. you know, in my sort of common sense bracket. And, but had I, had I not had the, the gumption and the knowledge and the empowerment to actually test it, I would have just believed the marketing spin. Right. And that's the whole thing at the yeah. end of the day. And, and we all want to believe. I mean, yeah, it's really funny. You know, I, I was doing a, a class yesterday online. And we got into a conversation about um, shampoos and conditioners and about pH. Right. And I was trying to explain to them the importance of pH. And, and I, I was trying to get them to understand that pH is based upon ionization. It, it's a measure of parts hydrogen. And I said, that is why many manufacturers that manufacture shampoos and conditioners, if they're not making their water that they use, wow. they make the deionized water. That means it has no ionization because ionization is one water molecule stealing a hydrogen from another water molecule which means that as that ionization occurs based upon what's happening, the water could either become more acid or it could become more alkaline. Wait a minute. It's just like a swimming pool, isn't it, Max? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so water, ha it will fluctuate on pH unless you, and with hair care products, which are most of them are 50% water, unless they use deionized water right. in their formulation. And so understanding that is real important. That's why we say to clients, consumers, don't add water from your tap to your mm -hmm. shampoo mm -hmm. to stretch it. Because adding water from your tap, the pH of that water will certainly probably be different than the water used in your hair care product. And depending on whether or not the ionization goes more acid or more alkaline, you could have a buildup of bacteria and the pH of that product could fluctuate extremely. And, and think about, and one more thought, because people can relate to this, a bottle of bottled water sitting in your car in the middle of June and you leave it in the car and you don't, right. you don't touch it for three or four days and the sun is beating down on it. And what's happening, because understand bottled water is not deionized water. Right. <laughs> so that pH is going all over the place, man. And that's why they say, if you're not going to drink the entire bottle of your bottle of water and do not leave it setting out, do not leave it set where it will be exposed to heat, either drink it or throw it away or right. do something with it. You know, you can refrigerate it. That would be a good thing to do. Yeah. But don't, just don't leave it setting and come back to it later. It's like, would you drink it after it sat for a couple of days in your car? No. Well, you know? some people would. 
Well, <laughs> truly. But the, the moral to the story is, and I think, you know, just to, to continue on with this too, it's like regular water is less expensive than deionized water. Yes. And manufacturers don't have to put whether or not the water is deionized on the label. It's awesome right. if they do, because then you know you have a really stable pH of your product. But literally, if you know the front of your salon has big windows and the retail shelf is facing them, you know, and windows are not, honestly, if it's not deionized water, the pH could be fluctuating in Absolutely. the unopened bottle. You Absolutely. add heat into the equation, which, you know, you've seen in our other videos, like, you know, you guys remember the butter. Yeah. You know, you're just... Get, get those molecules moving. Yeah, you're just adding, <laughs> you, you know, you're bringing another level to the party. So, you know, it, yeah. it, just increasing just saying. your knowledge. Yeah, just saying. <laughs> wow. So, hey, look, uh, that's why, you know, some of the, a lot of these things are very, very important. The art principles are great to use, but always make sure you use them as a metaphor. Please don't take them literally. Absolutely. You know, um, that is so much, so very important that you remember that. Remember, they're just a vehicle. The same thing as we say about a level chart. No manufacturer's level chart is accurate. Why? because it totally depends upon the concentration of pigment in the hair. Right. And each human being has their own personal genetics. Right. You know, so what you use, if you use number six on three different people, it could come out with three different results. It's still the same number six. What changed? It changed the canvas that you were using it on is what right. caused it to change. So <clears throat> that's why we need to empower ourselves. We need to incorporate those disciplines. So number one, seeking out the knowledge is going to make us mo understand more about what we're doing. And we need to practice good behaviors. Um, and we need to learn how to formulate. We need to learn how to work with the chemicals that we work with because, you know, there's lots of people who have survived their career without knowing very much. Good for them. They're lucky. Hey, yeah. But today, because chemicals have changed too, because we are demanding stronger chemicals all of the time. You know, I, I can't imagine what I would have said if you would have asked me 20 years ago, did you realize that one day bleaches will have a standard average pH of 11.5? Scare well, me to death because at 12 is where Nair lives. That's a depilatory. Right. <laughs> well, like, Dennis, so let's, let's like rewind back like maybe five, six years ago. You know, just about every tub of bleach said lifts up to seven levels. Now we have these crazy bleaches that say nine levels. Right. Why do you want to lift nine levels? That would take a level one to a 10. Right. Why would you want to put that on a level seven? Do you want to take a level seven to, you know, a level Nirvana blonde? Yeah. The precipice <laughs> of death. You know, it, it, it's crazy. It's like, it is, you know, do we really need that much more? Yeah. Well, like my grandpa said, you can kill a rabbit with a cannon, but you don't have much rabbit left. <laughs> and here we are on rabbit trail. And here we are on rabbit trail. <laughs> <sighs> I think of him all the time. He, you know, a great guy born in Eureka Springs, Arkansas. And he was like Mark Twain. He always had an antidote. He always had a question. He always had, you know, well, here's what I believe. Right. And uh, I can't believe how many of his sayings come back to haunt me now in my, in my life. I go, oh, my grandpa told me that when I was 12 years old. 
<laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but that's just the way that it is, you know. So hopefully, you know, we've given you a little bit of insight about the importance of understanding, you know, what we're working with and, and understanding that the art principles that are used in hair color classes are simply that. They are art principles and they're simply to give you an idea of what might be happening in the hair. Do you hear what I just said? An idea of what might be happening in the hair. It's not what is actually happening in the hair because you know they can't do that. They can't show you that always. But these are just uh, tools that we use to understand a little bit more about that. Now, if you want to know more, I encourage you to attend one of our educational events. There we do deep dives, and uh, our whole goal is to help you become a better colorist and help you under become better at your craft, you know, because that helps you avoid those pitfalls that every one of us experience in our career. Nobody makes it through the, this journey without having things go sideways on them. No one does. I always say the different, the only difference between an experienced colorist and a novice colorist is that the experienced colorists have had the opportunity to make more mistakes, mm -hmm. you know? And, and so that's why start now, learn now, empower yourself. Very, very important that you do that. So if you've been watching us on uh, YouTube, we want to thank you very much. We are in lots of great response for our program here on YouTube. We invite you to subscribe. You can subscribe down right down here below us. And then if you give us a thumbs up, if you like what we said, that's great. If you wanna leave a comment in the comment section, please do that. If you find this information beneficial, we have now, this is episode 22. We have 22 hours of information to share with you. You can binge out on that. I don't recommend it. I wouldn't binge out on Max and I for 22 hours. I don't think because <laughs> we would make you crazy. But in any case, you know, you can access it for, you know, more information and all of that. So we also rec invite you to follow us on Instagram. You can find Max at um, Max M Hair. Uh, on Instagram, you can find me at Real Captain Color. We invite you to uh, visit our website, www.gurunation.net. Take a look at our educational page and the educational programs that we offer. Uh, we have a program coming up next Sunday, which is a um, which is a tricked out version of Mashup. So it's uh, we've added some things to it to we're changing up some things we're going to be in our uh coming up soon we're going to be having a second level to formulation foundation but it's not going to be mashup mashup is going to be a standalone program that will be on its own so we're having a couple of different changes in some of the educational programs that you that we offer uh, but it is next sunday there's still tickets available if you wish log on and you can check that out you can pick up your tuition and purchase it right on our website also july 25th is that right max july 25th is uh, we're doing delete it 25th delete july, it july 25th we're going to be uh, with such a great response with Delete It, which was about working with direct eyes that we're going to be redoing that program again. And so that's up on our website and available to purchase tuitions for. Uh, we have our first live in-person program coming up July 13th. Um, I think it's July 11th and 12th or July 12th and 13th? July 11th and 12th. Yeah. Sunday, Monday? Yeah. 11th yeah. and 12th. 11th and 12th. And it'll be here at our studio in California, in Upland, California. Uh, and actually, you can attend. It is a pinnacle is the name of the program. It is a series. It's six days of education. But if someone wants to purchase just two days, you can do that as well. So you can buy the entire series, which is total immersion in hair color. We start you from point A, take you to point Z or you can purchase an individual class because some people sometimes feel confident in where they are and they say, look, I just need to do this. So our first class is all about 
hair color chemistry, hair chemistry. It's about formulation. It's about uh, techniques, about uh, application techniques and things of that sort. Our second session is about color correction. Uh, day one, you are given a mannequin, which has pretty much anything that can go wrong on a head of hair is done on that mannequin. And you're given a target picture. Your job is to change that mannequin so that it matches that target picture by the end of day two. And session three is all about color placement. It is about understanding the elements of color placement, the elements of design, how to work with painting the hair, how to, about some balayage information, some customizing color information about color placement. And then on day two, it's all about blonding. So it's about how we pick a toner, you know, what levels do we really lighten the hair to to create certain shades of blonde? Because that again is a whole nother class. Many people, if I took 50 hairdressers and gave them all the mannequin of the same color and I said, take this mannequin to blonde, they would all take that mannequin to uh, different variations. Some of them would take it as far as they could until the hair snapped or broke because we don't really know that there are certain colors that are created at certain specific levels. So when a toner doesn't perform for you, before you blame the toner, look to see if the canvas is the right level to support the toner that you've chosen. And so we'll do a rabbit trails on that one too, Max. I think we could. That might be too. Yeah. And everybody, don't forget, we are available and ready to travel for yeah. in salon classes. Absolutely. So please reach out to Dennis or myself and we can totally get you scheduled. We'd you love bet. to see you. You bet. So anyway, uh, it has been fun. And As always. Oh, oh, there it is. Our ride is here, Max. So uh, I uh, look forward to seeing you again, my friend. Thank you all of you Definitely. for watching. Hopefully we've been beneficial for you. And as always, from my heart to yours, I am Captain Color. I'm out. Max, how about you? I'm out too. Thanks, everybody. All right. And again, thank Have a you great so day. Much. See you all. Bye-bye.